welcome to the Tech News Podcast with myself and Hidayat and we have two very special guests today from a special uh, user community. So I will leave the floor to them to introduce uh, themselves and we will get right into the topic just after that. Thank you. All right, um, I'll pick the mic up first. Hey everyone, good morning um, or afternoon. It's a podcast, <laughs> depending on when you're listening to it. I'm Vidush, Vidush Lama, and uh, I'm part of a, a community, many communities in Mauritius, but in particular for today, the .NET user group Mauritius. Um, as the name entails, I am a user and a developer in .NET. In fact, I would say .NET is my primary uh, mastery or expertise. Although I work with many different technologies, I always seem to come back to .NET. Um, and yeah, I've been in the in the field for quite a while, although I don't like to admit it because uh, then I have to look at my age. Uh, but uh, <laughs> okay, I, yeah, okay, but, but maybe, maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, I've also been part of a lot of different communities, and I'm looking forward to sharing a bit about that user group and what we do today. So, yeah, Joki. Oh yeah, good. Cool. So. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this world. Um, my name is Jochen Kirstetter. Based on the pronunciation for English and French speaking, it's easier to just call me Jockey. That's my nickname for over 20 decade, uh, two decades, which is also quite aligning with the amount of time that I'm, since I'm a professional software developer. Um, originally, I started actually somehow on web development, you know, HTML free um, scripting on Bash and, and Linux systems. Then I went into the world of uh, Microsoft based on a um, study job that I did um, on the side. And um, yeah, one of the things is that back in 2002, I got my hands on the early betas of .NET and it was more appealing at the time and still now is the, compared to Java. Nothing against Java. It was just that .NET was more and C Sharp was more appealing to my way of thinking. So meaning that I'm, I'm a long-term user of .NET. I'm very happy about the latest um, iterations. Now .NET 9 is coming up uh, in a few, few weeks time. And yeah. Regarding community, it's a situation that I used to operate a community back in Germany for, well, participating a few years, but also then running a weekly user group for more than two years before coming to Mauritius. And um, I was surprised about the lack um, of, of um, you know, these kind of activities on the island. And then in 2013, it's the start of the uh, Mauritius Software Craftsmanship Community, or short MSCC, which was literally just, um, you know, personal desire um, to meet with IT people outside from the working hours. And the idea regarding the .NET user group um, came, I think, about in 2019, 2020. It was definitely before COVID. Yeah. Um, so that actually, um, you know, the MSSC is technology agnostic. Uh, everybody is welcome. Every technology is welcome. However, we had too many um, meetings that was um, focusing around .NET based on my personal background. And um, so I thought, okay, it might be actually more interesting to, to fork out um, and give responsibility than to other organizers on a on a targeted .NET user group, and because you know there there are other benefits. Um, if if everything is like um, consolidated and pulled to one um, single community, it's like a single point of failure. And having a new or a separate uh, .NET user group, which is then also officially listed as a chapter in the worldwide um, community of the .NET Foundation. Uh, it's just um, adding redundancy. Uh, it's also the situation that it takes off, you know, some responsibility on my regular activities. And I'm pleased to see that, you know, folks like Vidush, Pavas, and others in the .NET community in Mauritius picked it up 
and um, yeah, doing the advocacy. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe give a different point of view of the of the .NET community and why for me it was always interesting is um, well I do use .NET but like I said I use a lot of technologies so going to the meetups going to um, different community meetups even when we go to DevFest which is going to happen very soon in October there is always the presence of .NET and I always like to participate but that's the thing um, yeah. .NET is heavily used in Mauritius but also not known as much. It's it's contradicting. It's heavily used in a corporate environment a lot. Yeah. Any companies in Mauritius look for .NET uh, skills, which is it's, it doesn't say anything about technologies being better. Eh? That's a that's a that's an old thing. When you when you're younger, you think technologies are better, but then you realize you know PHP has its place, .NET has its place, everything else has its place, but it is heavily used in in corporate environments. So that's good. It is known in that area. But then what can you do as a tinkering project, pet projects? How far can you push .NET? Trying to use things like Xamarin when they first came out in, or when they first uh, got acquired and, and taken by Microsoft forward in around 2014, I think. Uh, the first kind of Xamarin from Microsoft versions were, were pushed and then you have Xamarin Forms. Those were new and uh, those were not as known. So, so that's the contradiction I see that a lot of people use .NET, but they sometimes don't realize also how much fun you can have with it. How, how far can you push it? JavaScript seems like the hip, you know, fun language that doesn't force you to do anything. .NET is the more mature structured language that says you have to do things in a certain way, but you can break those rules and try things out. And that's, that's actually why I, I joined uh, and, and now I'm helping out with the .NET user group, Mauritius. It's um, to bring all those people who use this tech already together to show and help them and them help me figure out how we can um, find new things, try new things, you know, integrate it with things that we never thought before that we could. Like there was a session at DEF CON using uh, C-Sharp to build a game in Godot. And uh, that was done by, by Fawaz, who uh, Joki also mentioned. Mm -hmm. I never knew you could do that. It was simple enough. Godot, you know, abstracts all everything around game development and you just have to use your existing C-Sharp skills and quickly enough build a game. Never knew that. So this is the kind of thing we want to bring to the, to the new game community, to the .NET user group community. Um, Learn the things you don't know, have fun with it. Uh, obviously we will use .NET, we will use certain Microsoft technologies because that's a bit our forte, so we will use that to, to show it. But even if you are not a .NET developer, nothing prevents you from coming and looking at, hey, what do these guys do? How can I try it out? Nothing prevents you from doing that. We all started someplace. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Just to rebound on that, for me, part of my interest was that <clears throat> .NET even, yeah, like you said, so many companies use it, but if you are going to go and ask someone, senior developer, to get into Azure, to become a technical architect, nobody knows. And mm, mm, for mm. me, my expectation joining the community was this, by the way. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the thing is that, as Vitor said, um, .NET and C Sharp is mainly used in enterprise, you know, uh, mature, um, uh, environments and even if we see the the local companies here on the market um, quite a good number of them are um, uh, outlets or subsidiaries from international companies so if i give it a rough estimate i would say we have easily over a thousand maybe even over two thousand developers in mauritius that are working in .NET. Uh, using C Sharp on a daily basis, um, there are mission critical applications on the market that are that are operated um, in .NET. Um, so there, there is there is actually a lot of of material. There is a lot of uh, talent uh, on the local market. And um, coming to your to your question is also that um, getting uh, into a position from from junior. Uh, mediator to uh, to senior is that um, 
I would say, based on the fact that it's more established uh, on the market, it might be scary at the first place. Um, however, you should also see that um, the .NET ecosystem is very large. So meaning that you can actually um, put yourself on a broad uh, fundament, um, you know, having the basics, having the fundamentals of, of using and programming in .NET. However, there is no stress then to say at a certain stage that you go into a specific, a specific area and specialization yeah, like you go for um, API developments, um, you might say now the new hype about integrating machine learning and artificial intelligence, um, that you look into new technologies like semantic kernel uh, that you add into your um, .NET applications. Or, you know, there's still also the range about um, um, a, a myriad of applications written in .NET Framework, which is the original version coming from 2002, still supported nowadays, so meaning 22 years of development stack. And of course, since about 2014, 2015, with the start of .NET Core and now .NET, um, you have a new stack that has been written from scratch um, with certain aspects in mind, like cross-platform, uh, low memory consumption, performance, security, and bits and pieces, because even though it shares the same name of .NET and some of the principles, um, it is completely built from, from ground up um, based on the experience that Microsoft has learned over the past two decades in the .NET framework, but also incorporating um, proven uh, concepts and, and um, let's say, implementations from other communities. Yeah, typical case would be a situation about NuGet packages. I mean, this came at a later stage. However, it has its advantages. And if I'm not completely mistaken, it was inspired by the package handling from Node. Yeah, so, I mean, there are lots of things where you can actually um, start in .NET, get your fundamentals ready, uh, focus, to my opinion, on .NET 6, .NET 8, which is the uh, long-term version nowadays, and um, then build it up and go into, uh, go into a specific area um, where you can actually then, uh, you know, build up your, your knowledge, your expertise, expertise and shine. I, um, I, I, an alternative view that I saw when I talked to people was, um, which kind of relates to the community. So your, your question that I was about people who want to move up in expertise, I'm going to forget the senior media technical because it always changes. <laughs> But people who want to really grow within the .NET um, mastery or Azure or related technologies want to maybe become an architect at some point, you know, those people. It's not specific to .NET, but I feel like, uh, at least in, in, in Mauritius, they sometimes don't know how to move forward. I'm, I'm not trying to get every company's career guidance against me. <laughs> Your guidance has its place, but technically speaking, when you want to figure out as a senior, what should I know, what should I do with .NET as an architect, how should I view .NET as, you know, different position, what are the expectations? It's not very clear. I, I, and that's my personal feeling. I feel like some people know what they're doing. Um, Jockey, probably as you learned, you knew what you were doing for me as well as I, because I've been in it and I talked to a lot of people. Also, why those events and those meetups are so important, talking to people, you know what you're doing. But a lot of other people, I'm not going to put a number on it, stumble into the role. They, they, uh, they kind of work as a junior, they do what they do, and then they kind of stumble into becoming a senior and the expectations are raised and they try to figure out what do you want from me and at the same time try to do the job. And so at least that's the, that's the kind of um, feedback. Not, not verbal feedback, but the observation I had when I see and I talk to a lot of people. And also why I feel like having the communities help because 
like I said, I, I didn't stumble as much, but the only reason I didn't stumble was I got to talk to people. I talked to jockeys since I was in university. We've, we've, we've known each other. I've talked to um, Shervin, who was in .NET and Azure himself, and he was very experienced back in the days. So I got to talk to a lot of different people who have potentially stumbled and they've learned, and I learned from their learnings. You know, the best way is to learn from others' mistakes. And, uh, and then, you know, you move forward. But a lot of people don't realize they need to do that or they don't see their place in it. Like, I'm going to give you an example. If we have um, most people, or a lot of people, they are doing their job, they are doing .NET or they are doing any kind of technologies, and, and then they have their own hobbies. They are maybe not that deep into tech, like, you know, spending every hour of their day coding like some of us <laughs> do. <laughs> but, but they like the technology but just not that much which means they are not investing their personal time as much trying to figure things out those people which is a bigger majority and eh? people who really invest themselves into something is usually the minority those yeah. people they do want to grow but they don't know how and they don't know where to find out how now they look at the Community. So they see DevCon as a great event and they come, they see all the different um, sessions, they see the uh, different communities and they work primarily in .NET. So they are not going to relate to, uh, you know, Linux user group, Python user group, to the front end community. They are not going to relate to it. When they look at them, in their mind, it's going to be, okay, that's not going to help me much. So then bringing up a .NET user group gives yeah. them a place to go, okay, I want to figure things out. I can go there and see what they have because .NET is something I know and, and try to figure it out. So, yeah, it, it actually worked. Eh? Uh, someone reached out to me for, for DevCon. Uh, she wanted to do a session on, on tests. She doesn't even write code, uh, .NET code as much, but she works in an environment where they write .NET. And her job is testing and quality checking and making sure, you know, it's not just about it works, but about making it good for user experience and so on. So just the fact that um, probably, I'm, I'm assuming here, probably I should ask if that had an impact, but the fact that uh, .NET was coming up and then her colleagues were interested because, ah, that's what we use, that got to her and then eventually she came to DEF CON and she presented. So you kind of see how the community works. <laughs> I'll just um, ask two quick questions, just in between. Um, who can join how? <laughs> um, okay, the, the .NET user group uh, at, at this point in time, and we also don't expect to change that, is uh, essentially an open community. So we, we, it's not like we have a uh, exclusive sign-in and pay a premium process. We, we don't have that. We, we, thankfully, some communities have it, and you have to also understand that for a community to run, they need a platform, they need to do some work. So sometimes they need a little bit of funding so that they can have that meetup page, for example. Thankfully for us, we are, you know, associated with the .NET Foundation, which is a, a global um, uh, organization, if you will, global foundation. And they gave us the tool that we can use. They gave us the, the meetup page. We can host the events there, um, you know, digitally place the events there. So we don't, we don't need much in terms of that. Hence, we can keep the community an open community where anybody can join. The easiest way for you to join is um, attend an event and then talk to the people. And that's it. Because, again, there is no sign-up process. Follow the Instagram page. Follow the Meetup page. And that's it. You get notified of the events that are coming up. We're trying to keep those things updated on future events as well. And then you can decide how do you want to be part of the community. You can be an attendee. So you see the events coming up, you join and you watch and you, you know, support the people trying to present. That's very much appreciated. But at some point you might say, hey, I want to try it out myself. And that's where you reach out to, you don't even need to think about it. Reach out to the people you've seen. You've seen me talking, reach out to me. You've seen Fawaz talking, reach out to him. Uh, we have other members, Satish, uh, Kavir, they were present in, in some events, like, for example, the meetup in June, talk to them. So you don't even need to think about who leads meetup, because that's not the kind of mindset we want to push forward. We just want organized events, organized things, let people come in, uh, activities that people join in. And if you want to organize something, we help you out. So 
the way it works is DevCon comes up. We look at the community and we say, hey, guys, anybody wants to help for DevCon? And, you know, three, four, five people say, yeah, maybe I can help. We get together and that's the DevCon team. We're going to try to do something. DevCon is done. The team go back home. You know, back to the <laughs> and then we have, let's say, for example, there's going to be something like the uh, Global AI Summit or there is the Hacktober coming up, DevFest coming up soon. Uh, so then we again call out Instagram meetup. Um, we are also trying to set up a Discord. Hey guys, anybody want to help do something for DevFest? And then you get a few names pop up, and now you have a new team, you know, trying to do something for DevFest. So that's all. We're trying to keep it open. Join in the format or in the position that you feel you can do so. It can be an attendee, it can be an organizer. It can be someone who's just here to say, hey, I can't do much. But maybe I can post your social media things. Yeah, great. <laughs> it varies. We have lives, so we we work it with, with each other and work it out. So and the interest the interesting part is also even that you have no idea what .NET C Sharp is. If you're curious about it, just pop in in one of the meetups, say hello, and and see and talk to people and uh, see what it's all about. Because I mean, um, as Peter said, it's open. Um, it's free of charge. Um, there is the announcements on Instagram as well as on meetup.com. So it's easily uh, to discover about the meetups that are going on. And, you know, seeing software development uh, or jobs in IT a little bit like, you know, um, blue color jobs also means that uh, you need to practice, you need to work your skills um, in order to improve, in order to get better, because I mean, I can't be a carpenter if I don't know how to use a saw, I don't know how to use, uh, you know, wood glue, I don't know how to cut wood, make joints and bits and pieces. I cannot declare myself being a, a carpenter if I'm not, you know, um, experiencing with tools, uh, doing things, talking to other uh, more experienced um, carpenters and that's the same so meaning actually coming to those meetups um, gives you the ability as well to you know exchange with others um, have your questions answered maybe even get a chance to to talk to someone more directly get a mentor uh, in a certain way because this is how you can grow um, in a very fun and, and entertainable way. And yeah, there's, again, there are hundreds, over thousands of .NET developers on the island. Um, there's, a, there's a really good chance that um, you can learn from others, you can share your experience, um, you get maybe coming up, hey, I ran into a certain problem is anybody here that that might have an answer or that might give me a directions where to look at? That's um, if I can just add something there. That's that's exactly the kind of place we want to reach at some point. Um, that kind of real community feeling. It's um, it's it's also that we can't we can't read minds. <laughs> lots of people like. Jackie's saying lots of people use .NET, but we tried and we can't read minds. So if you want to see something, you want a kind of particular event, you want something on a particular topic, you should drop a message, you should reach out. Because we otherwise, we will always just assume and talk to the few people we know to figure out what's interesting next. And, and you might have this great idea that is just sleeping in the corner. And hopefully down the line, I don't know, uh, Jackie, you're also... Uh, a gamer so you know it's it's that guild feeling like you know you have a guild you have the the crafts people you have the uh, everybody kind of together in the different channels and then you have a problem or you want to share something you get to go there that's kind of the the feeling we want to get to at some point yeah but step step by step <laughs> but even, even for gaming i mean if you want to get better at a game you need to play it you can't just talk about it you need to play it and that's the same with with any kind of programming um, point one, read, read, read source code. Point two, write, write, write source code. Yeah. And see that it's like, like in a game, you, you jumping from quest to quest to quest. 
it's with programming, you jumping from error message to error message to error message until it compiles and you have a result and you're like, yes, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a different error message. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you see in the error console window, just going like stack trace exception, and then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously, um, it's really about um, the communities here in Mauritius have really grown, matured. Um, if I see it from a from a standpoint of the MSCC when it started back in 2013, it was just you know, like two hands full of people that came to the first meetups and seeing it now that we have at least five, six, seven active user groups that are specialized in different areas like Python, like .NET, like front end development, even AWS or the Google developer group no, yeah, no. That, that literally came out of this um, specialized interest to do more um, i'm really happy about that and when you look at the pictures or even if you attend one of those meetings you will actually see that there are easily 20 up to 100 people on a regular monthly basis yeah and uh, i mean i'm just fascinated by this development and the interest and it's also that uh, it's not only down to professionals. This is something I really like to stress out. It's also that students are all uh, joining these meetups because they see that, mm, okay, we have our curriculum. Maybe something is missing. Maybe I can already reach out to professionals in the industry to get guidance on my future career, maybe even chances for you know placement for internships or future jobs. And interesting, uh, interestingly as well is that even secondary students yeah. Yeah, are coming to the meetups and some of them even already spoke at past editions of the developer conference. It's like really this, this um, fairy tale story mm -hmm. from um, not knowing that something exists to attending to getting, you know, dipping the feet or the hands into the material to speaking at such an event, and then even having the chance to grow further to speak at international events. Yeah, I will <laughs> ask you something, but before that, I will share a anecdote. Maybe you won't believe it, but throughout my career, most of the colleagues that I had had no interest in IT, tech, or programming. So we talk and they say, yeah, I just do it for the money, like just a job. Let's talk football. Then we meet like-minded people and the motivation is something else. And, oh, by the yeah. way, maybe yes. you show your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's good quality. Yeah, put it somewhere yeah it is, it is. Maybe <laughs> all of us conference makes its mark. Yeah. So maybe we're going to have some .NET here uh, and strike coming up in the future. <laughs> I put it specially for this uh, recording. <laughs> so yeah, the final question for today, what's next for the community? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, we are, um, because we, we recently took up, you know, becoming active again, we, the .NET community, like uh, I think Jockey, you gave the day was around 2019, pre-COVID. Um, it didn't get a lot of traction at the start, but um, and and funnily enough, I actually also was a part of it at the start, even though I've said I've worked with .NET so much. Uh, yeah, there was uh, too many. Um, I was already in other communities, so I didn't want to overdo it either. But then this year we got together the whole team, and then we said, "Hey, let's bring it back up." But we also don't want to go kind of put all the energy in the sprint at the beginning and then you know slow down completely. So we are really looking at um, something like one or two events per quarter and, and you know, build it up. And, and um, at the moment, for example, the few things we have on our horizon is we know we want to do something around um, around AI, which would be either season of AI, which Joki pointed out to me, um, has started already, um, or the Global AI Summit. That's uh, somewhere in September that normally you would have the Global AI Summit. It's one of the things we are looking into. But again, this is also a call out for, hey guys, if you want to help, 
<laughs> reach out to me, maybe reach out to Joki, maybe reach out to Abdallah if you are more familiar with him. That's also okay. And then Abdallah, you can be the bridge. But um, yeah, so Global AI Summit in September, we uh, we have the Dev Fest in October. So we want to also present something there and, and you know, bring something there. Um, and then in later this year, we have the .NET conference itself that we want to do for the release of the .NET 9 um, uh, version. We did already a meetup in June for .NET 9 preview. But that was kind of just a, hey, guys, let's see what has been going on. In November, you have .NET 9 being officially released, uh, so that we want to have an event there as well. And hopefully in December, so, you know, as you can see, yeah, the, the, we need to plan those things. But in December, we're thinking about um, something that I really liked in the past. In the past, I used to be in a group called the Microsoft Student Partners. Mm. And, uh, it was also a community of students back when I was in university. And there is this thing we used to do in December called Hour of Code, which is which was always fun. Hour of Code is this um, global movement, if you will, that says, hey, during one week, all us developers who want to participate, we will dedicate one hour of our time to teach younger people, so really students, even children, how to code. And we used to focus actually on children. We would host this event um, we, we would pick a university or something like that where they already have the equipment, they have the computers, and we would open it up for parents to bring their kids and we would teach them how to code using uh, you know tools like Scratch or something like that, where sometimes they would build a mini Minecraft game and to do that, they have to place the blocks together and that forms a code. That was a really interesting concept. I'm actually talking to the group that, hey, let's try to bring that up. It's also a bit different compared to just speaking events. So yeah, um, we, we, we want to do those things down the line, um, Global AI Summit, um, DevFest, the .NET Conference, and Hour of Code. Um, yeah, so that's what's next on the horizon. The one thing I would add is um, we also want it to be for the community. So when I'm saying this is also a call out to everybody to, hey, come and give your ideas, you don't need to be organizing sometimes just brainstorming with us is good enough so we really want to try to make it um a fun interactive events like i was saying for the hour of code where you sit down you know with two kids and then you try to explain to them how things work uh, so we really want to have those kind of interactive events that are not just about looking at the session just to see how things go maybe people would prefer that um yeah Ooh. One last thing, which which is not planned. There is always one last thing. Uh, the because the question was what's next. Those were the events, but what's next in terms of our approach or mentality, how we want to, to do these things? We we actually like Joki was saying. There is a there is a lot of community. There are a lot of communities in Mauritius. You know, you've got the Python. You've got front end user group. Um, front end coders rather. You've got uh, the newly created cloud native chapter in Mauritius. We actually like those groups. <laughs> we've been, <laughs> been to their meetups, we've been to their sessions. We, we started or we, re, we became active recently. So we looked at them before and they were great communities. Cloud native is also recently uh, created. So we are kind of uh, brother in arms there because we're both quite recent. So um, we actually want to collaborate more as well. So um, we want to not just host .NET events, but rather host um, collaborative events with each other, like with front-end. We could do a front-end meetup, you know, featuring Blazor as, hey, what does front-end look like in .NET? And then we could have a collaborative meetup. So that's, that's for me, that's also something we want to get to. Um, I, I am talking to a few of those communities already to try to see, hey, what can we do together? But um, it expands horizons because otherwise you stay, you know, hold up in the box that you know, which in this case would be .NET. Let's open it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> add some Azure as well because we have so many interests uh, in cloud uh, so many of the big companies we've been talking about even smaller yeah. ones love using azure especially for deployment but hosting code as well 
and there are so many certifications to get at. We already talked about that earlier. And Agreed. anyone anyone can get confused, even myself. <laughs> so maybe yeah, that's one day synchronized. We we definitely are looking forward to to doing that. Eh? It's uh, when you when you when you connected with us at DevCon and you were talking about hey let's uh, let's talk about certifications. It's a uh, it's a it's a, it's not easy to navigate it. Uh, Jockey has been navigated for a long time. I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure how to find your way around the certifications. Um, there are people who have done recently certifications, so they have their experience to share on how did they prep, what did they do. So we have the people, we have the interest. Um, we definitely want to host that event, um, the certification focused and Azure focused event. But yeah, let's let's talk some more and try to see if we can um, have it. You know, sometime soon, maybe at day force itself. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think there's there's just a little addition to that is that um, the communities, whether it's the .NET user group or um, the MSSC or any of the other ones that has been mentioned, is that it's really like an informal get together uh, to share knowledge, to share experience, to have fun, and it's not, let's say, even that there is a transfer of knowledge. It, it it is not uh, understandable as a training facility yeah because i mean there are no defined courses there is no let's say curriculum or whatever uh, it's just that okay a specific topic regarding a certain event like season of ai like .NET conference etc but it is really like a bit, let's say, informal um, and not as structured as you might expect it, because sometimes it can even happen that something is coming up very spontaneous and um, just to pick it up, what's coming next. Uh, one of the um, bullet points that we were brainstorming actually inspired by the front end guys mm -hmm. is that maybe something like lightning talks, tips and tricks, uh, could be very interesting, um, you know, scenario for for a .NET user group um, mm -hmm. activity. Yeah, like I don't know, maybe in a few months' time, then it's just everybody shares tips and tricks in I don't know five minutes, ten minutes time. You know, it's like these are my hotkeys to do this and that. Like for like Abdullah, you are, you had a fantastic session on how to leverage Obsidian. You know, to to get your uh, thought process under control. Um, I'm absolutely an advocate for using hotkeys, and it's uh, it amazes me when you know when you when when I uh, give trainings or when when I talk with other people, uh, just to observe them how they use their tools. You know, it's like uh, pushing the mouse is is. So time consuming, uh, whereas, you know, you can be easily twice as fast or faster if you are aware of the different hotkeys that that your, that your um, IDE or your text editor is offering to you. So, yeah, because, you know, there are ways and ways. And again, it's all about practice. It's all about learning from others, more experienced people. And the funny thing is, you know, there is no um, level of uh, establishment, maturity, or whatever, because I have to admit, um, I've seen things from secondary students that I was not even aware of it, and they showed it to me. It's like, hey, that's the coolest thing ever. And I was like, yeah, how <laughs> did I miss that? And so even, you know, like folks like me, we can still... Um, learn and benefit from the experience and knowledge from others. And that's that's the beauty of these meetings. Now, <clears throat> um, we are trying to get other communities as well. So, <clears throat> which is very interesting is that Jockey, maybe we are going to call you a few times because you are in so many <laughs> of them. <laughs> MSCP, Vidush as well, Ish, and some others, and even Google developers, and I forget others as well. <laughs> So yeah, um, our plan right now for Tech News is trying to get a maximum, but uh, it's a bit time consuming. 
So I'm very happy. Uh, Hidayat is already gone. <laughs> But we are going to meet very soon. I missed the last MSCC meetup, fortunately, but I'm looking forward for the next ones. Thank you very much, Vidush and Joki. Yeah, my pleasure. Stay Thanks, everyone. Yeah, never, uh, good luck. <laughs> hey, you, need, you, you don't have to wash your car again? <laughs> oh, no, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's one in Eben, actually, uh, Saturday, so it, it's been raining. Yeah. So not sure if it's worth it, but yeah, even one hour in events very very close, and I'm just going to stop the.